Welcome to another episode of Pistons of Fury. In this episode, we're designing a custom cooling system to keep our LS Turbo Swap cool in our 1966 Dodge Coronet station wagon. Okay, so in this episode, we are tackling the cooling system for our LS turbo swap setup. And the first key component of this system is going to be this small um, surge slash expansion tank. The, the name's kind of used interchangeably, but same function. Um, so I picked this up from Summit. This is uh, Kaiser Manufacturing Co. I'm pretty sure it's US made. It's got pretty nice TIG welding. It's aluminum. Um, looks to be a pretty quality piece. Um, you can find these, well, this one's from Summit, but you can find them all over the internet, whether it's eBay or Amazon. Your mileage may vary based on the brand you go with, so um, this does have to be under pressure. This will see you know, upwards of 20, 30 PSI, depending on what you're doing with your cooling system, so probably want to invest a little bit of money. I think this was around 60 bucks. Um, so cool things about this are we've got a, a half inch NPT port on the bottom. This is a female port and two quarter inch NPT ports on either side. Um, the top is a standard radiator cap, and then we have a small, um, what I believe is, I'm gonna say one eighth NPT port on the top, and this is for the overflow. Um, so the way this is gonna set up is basically I'm gonna have a T here at the bottom, so an NPT um, T that comes off here and goes to three quarter inch barbs. So I'll have coming from the water pump um, into the bottom here, and then that'll basically do my, my overflow or my expansion functionality that's gonna happen there. Um, and then on this side, I'm gonna have my steam port. So I'm gonna convert this to a 5 16 barb. That's gonna go around to my steam port on the LS engine. Um, I've got the truck based LS 4.8 engine. So I only have a steam port at the front and I'm gonna keep it that way. The rears are blocked off. Um, and then finally, on this front side, where we'll end up being the front side, um, I'm gonna have another one that goes to my radiator. So I've got a radiator overflow from the top cap, and that's gonna go in here. Um, and then finally, this one, I'm gonna have a, basically a, just a 3 8 um, hose that goes out to a um, recovery tank, not an, o not an overflow recovery tank, and then we will have a cap. And I'm gonna mount this on my firewall so that it's the highest position, so this will be my fill point, and this will basically be above cylinder heads, it'll be above the radiator, um, so this will be the highest point, and I'll be able to bleed off air through this setup as well. Um, on the bottom, so the LS engines use two hose sizes, three quarter inch heater hose and five eighths. Um, if you look on your LS water pump, you can kind of see there's um, connection points for the five eighths and the three quarters. Um, and that's how it works. So I've actually made a little diagram drawing just to kind of keep this straight in my head, which we're gonna zoom into now. Okay, so this is the drawing I made in my system. A little hard to follow, but we've got a radiator up here. Um, we have a one and a quarter inch pipe that goes to the water pump or radiator hose. And then from the bottom, we have a one and a half inch that goes into the bottom of the water pump. Um, basically the way this works is we will have a five eighths that um, that goes to our heater core. Out of the heater core comes a three quarter inch, which goes to the bottom of our surge tank. So that's the, the bottom port that I showed you. And that essentially just flows right through back to the water pump. Now, because it's a T, we can actually have our system expand up into the expansion tank, hence the name. And this will basically give us some more capacity within the system. Now, I only have a one liter tank, so that's, a, that's really not a whole lot. Um, for the expansion tank to be the only potential place cooling could go in the system, um, it would probably need to be about a liter and a half. I've only got a liter, so what we're going to do from here is have a um, have an outlet right under the cap, which will basically allow us to, when the system bleeds over, bleed over into a uh, recovery tank. And what this does is if you have a tank that's a recovery tank that your surge tank links to, and you basically um, overflow into the bottom of that tank, the way this works is when the system cools down, when you shut the car off and everything cools, it creates a vacuum effect, which actually sucks this um, coolant back up into the surge tank. So that's why it's called a recovery tank. 
and not just an overflow tank. Overflow tanks, sometimes they'll just dump in the top and they'll have a drain spout at the bottom so that you can drain that off. But this is a fully closed system. This is pressurized, this piece is not pressurized. And then I also have um, just some little drawings here. The steam port comes in this side, like I said earlier, and overflow from the radiator, should that ever happen, will go in this other port here. So we are now gonna move over to the car and see how all of this stuff is going to get put together and where we're gonna start mounting things. First thing is gonna be mounting the surge tank on the firewall. So I've actually done a little bit of experimentation and, and tried to see where this would fit the best. Um, I did explore over here, kind of right inside my hood hinge, which kind of sits right here. Blanket's kind of in the way, but you can kind of see the hood hinge. Um, I was thinking about right there, but then that would make it really hard to get to my um, O2, my wideband sensors down there. So, um, and also I think it would be kind of be hard to fill with the hood hinge here and, and all that in place. So next option was over here on the firewall. Um, and I do have some existing ports and holes and, and things like that, which I'll have to eventually cover up. But I think what I'm gonna end up doing is mounting this flush against the firewall right here, which would basically allow for um, my T branch to sit under here. So I would have my three quarter inch come down, up, under, flow through. I could have a bulkhead fitting right here for AC and heater components to go through the firewall. And then um, also have my steam port kind of route right under the intake manifold and come up on this side. So thinking like this is the best setup. So a couple things I have to do. Um, I've got to drill some mounting holes in here. Um, I've got to grind down flush a few things on the firewall. So that'll probably be the first thing that I do. Um, grind that flat, hammer this down, um, make sure I can uh, create a good mounting point here, and then we'll drill some holes in the surge tank on my brackets that it came with here, and line those up on the firewall, do some nut certs there, and then finally we'll be able to mount this. Um, one thing we may have to do is if I'm mounting this flush, I may have to come in here and clearance this, uh, this body panel a little bit, so we'll, we'll take a look at that and see if I actually have to do that. Okay, so just doing some test fitting here. Um, so I borrowed the cap from my radiator, which you can see right here. Um, and I don't necessarily have to use this cap. Well, I'm not using this cap, but I don't have to use this style. Um, I just wanted to make sure that when it's at its widest point, if I do use this style, that I will basically have enough room to turn it when it's on the car. Um, this is pretty close. So what I may end up doing, depending on the cap that I settle with and how difficult it is to get that on and off back here, um, I may space this out a little bit, maybe stack a washer, like a thick washer, some kind of spacer behind this. But I think for now, um, I should be good to come in here and drill some holes in my tank and then drill some mounting points on the firewall.
So as I mentioned before, we've got two different sizes of hoses for the LS engine. We have our 5 8 inch and our 3 quarter inch. Um, both of those have outputs coming from the water pump, and one of them, which is the 5 8 has to go to the firewall, to our heater core, and the 3 quarters has to go from the water pump to my new surge tank. So I've got a couple different options for routing, but I think what I'm going to do is route the 3 quarter inch down under the engine, under the engine mount, and come up by the firewall to route into the surge tank itself. And then the 5 8 I'll need to go down below as well, but also kind of reroute that around the exhaust and up to my firewall because I'm actually going to run a, um, a firewall bulkhead connector for my AC and heater lines. So two different routings, but they're coming from the same place. So I'm going to start the water pump, go under my engine mount, and route from there and see how it goes. Okay, so I've got the hoses that I have kind of run the way I want them run. Um, use some of my 3 8 inch fuel hose, leftover fuel hose that I had from the um, last project, the transmission line project, and routed from my radiator overflow down, again, following the same path as the rest of the hoses, and up through here behind the exhaust, and we'll come in this side, as I mentioned before, into this port. I'll get a barb fitting for that. Um, this is 1 8 inch NPT. I think what I'm going to do, probably I need to get my bulkhead connector as the next piece. There's a couple things I need to order um, to get to the next part of this project, but basically I need to get my bulkhead fitting so I know where everything's going here. And then I'll also probably order my, um, my recovery tank. And I'm thinking I'll just mount it right here, keep everything close, localized, reduce the amount of plumbing that I have to run all over the place. So next up, I need some fittings for this guy need my uh, recovery tank and need uh, just a few more random fittings and then I think we should be able to button this all up. Okay, we're back working on the cooling system for the LS turbo swap. So a few things since uh, the last part of the project. Um, last thing you saw was this installed in the car and I had some of my um, hoses preliminarily run, um, but what I really needed was some fittings. So um, thanks to Hydraulic Direct, who's not a sponsor or anything, um, but actually it was kind of the one-stop shop that I found to be able to get all of this in the same place, and they were they shipped it really fast in the middle of pandemic stuff, so cool, do business with them. Um, so what I have here is a, a few different things. So I, I kind of pieced this together. This is half-inch NPT um, going to straight uh, three-quarter inch hose barb and then to a 90 degree barb. So basically this will come up behind the engine, all the three-quarter inch hose in here. It comes through here. If it's surging into the surge tank or expanding into the expansion tank, whatever you want to call this guy, um, will basically bubble up through here, but otherwise it just keeps flowing, right? So this comes from the engine out here to the heater core and uh, and on its on the rest of its journey. Um, here on the two sides of the tank, this is my steam port line. So this next down so this is um quarter inch npt but next down to like five sixteenths hose and then on this side it's quarter inch npt but we come down to three eighths inch hose so this goes um basically the overflow on my radiator routes into here dumps in the top of this expansion tank and we're good to go and then finally this is a um another three eighths inch and this will basically loop here into my new recovery tank so you'll notice this tank's a little bit different I've got a level site here, and the top, the cap, is actually a, it's kind of vented, right? So this is a non-pressurized tank. Um, and this is kind of a generic unit. You, know, you can pick these up. They're all over Amazon, all over eBay. I actually bought this on eBay because Amazon right now is not shipping anything like this within four weeks. So you kind of have to wait a while just due to the, the rest of the stuff they're dealing with. Um, so the cool thing about this is it's completely reversible. So it's got two holes at the top and one at the bottom on both sides. And it also has a, um, a hole in the bottom. So this is all, as far as I can tell, this is all quarter inch um, NPT stuff. So it just takes normal fittings. And the way I have this set up, because these are going to be mounted so closely together, I'm kind of blocking off everything on this side. Um, we'll run our overflow from the expansion down here into the bottom of this recovery tank. So this will work as a vacuum, right? So when the engine gets hot, it's going to overflow. It's going to pop the cap basically halfway. It's going to overflow into this recovery tank. We'll bubble up here through the bottom. It'll just expand into here. 
not this is a recovery, not expansion tank. And then as the engine cools, this actually creates a vacuum and will suck the, um, the excess capacity right back into the expansion tank. So it, using a system like this, you basically, with each of these being about a liter, um, you basically expand your cooling system by this much. So it, it gives you some real flexibility and you don't waste any fluid. So old school muscle car guys, you probably know you've got a line just running from your radiator down to the ground and you occasionally have to fill up your car once in a while with, with new coolant. With this system, everything stays enclosed and you can really control um, you know, exactly the fluid level of your car. And this also makes it easier to breathe, um, to bleed off cooling system. So I'm uh, going to find a place for this. May have to do some trimming in the engine compartment to, to get this to fit where I want it. But next up is we're going to get all this stuff mounted and start cutting some hose to, to size. Okay, so I was actually able to uh, find what I needed at the hardware store, so let's see if we zoom in here. These two 90 degree elbows, the one going uh, direct to 3 8 inch hose, and the one on the right side going to 5 16 um, Also got that 5 16 hose in the mail, so connected that up to my steam port fitting. Uh, right down here, out of focus. And that's all connected up. So basically steam port hose runs right under the intake manifold, um, I'll, I'll find a way to kind of shield that under there and comes back up here, overflows into the top of my um, expansion tank. And then let's see, we also have another overflow coming all the way up here from the radiator. I'm just going to zoom out. And uh, so basically this overflows and steam port overflows into the top of the expansion tank. And um, that, if it ever needs to overflow out of its own radiator style cap, that overflows into the bottom, right, right down there, the bottom of my recovery tank, and then I've got a little sight level on that. So the way it should work is when this expands, cap pops, overflows into the other tank, um, car's hot, it continues to operate like that, car cools down, and it actually, the way that radiator caps work is they allow, um, it's like a one-way check valve in, in a way, um, so they actually allow fluid back in, right? So as this cools over here on the left, um, the fluid cools, it'll get drawn like a straw, like, you know, right back into the engine. Um, so that's how the system works. And then on the bottom of that, I've got a, a T with three quarter inch hose. So that comes directly from the water pump, goes through there. If it expands, it'll go up. Otherwise it just passes right through into the heater core and then out of the heater core and all the way back into the pump. So that's pretty much the, the cooling system. Um, all done, I just need to order one more cap from my radiator up here to make sure that that never pops. Because I want, if, if the radiator overflows, I want that to happen at the expansion tank, not at the radiator. And then the last little piece of the puzzle is just gonna be making some AC lines. I need to figure out how I'm gonna do that, but those are the two bottom ports in that um, firewall. So, that's a wrap. The cooling system, um, it was something I, I had to spend a lot of time really researching this and making sure I would get it right. So pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, that'll get kind of taken apart when I take, you know, uninstall the engine and take everything out and we'll get all that blasted and painted and coated and all that. So next episode, um, I don't know what I'm going to, I have a couple things that I need to jump into. So there's the ignition coils that I have to mount. Um, there's the power steering system, there's the uh, PCV catch can system. So three big projects coming up, but that is it for the cooling. So um, hit me up in the comments with any questions. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.